what we need to talk about just quick quickly is that there are a number of you listening tonight uh, who have been very gracious and listened to um, us talking about happiness. Uh, and Meg mentioned this earlier, that uh, for you, happiness does not come so easy. Um, that you have uh, depression, anxiety, or any other mental illness that makes it very difficult, where you're almost fighting against your own DNA, uh, your own mind, to uh, to get to this happiness that everyone describes. You know, it's interesting when we read in the scriptures that, you know, when you keep the commandments, you'll be happy. But what happens when you keep the commandments and you're not happy, right? Uh, you run into a, a conflict there where you're thinking, uh, is something wrong with me? Am I broken? So uh, I would like to encourage uh, one thing. You know, I'm a big fan of social media. Uh, I think of it as like the modern day title of liberty. And so I spend, a, a, you know, a, a bit of time, I should probably too much, uh, on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And I wanted to show you something that I posted. Um, it's this this picture. And I, you know, what's cool about Twitter is that you have to, you have to kind of you have to say it in really succinct ways, right? The title of Liberty, you couldn't go on and on and on. You just got to say it quickly. So let me bring that up. Um, it's a, it's this picture. Uh, I put this one on Instagram, I think, or on Twitter. And uh, I, I, I really believe this. Uh, and from the studies, I, Mark mentioned the book that I wrote. And uh, from everything that I've read, I, I think anxiety and depression can be become manageable. Um, I've seen people succeed uh, at at this in this in this fight, uh, and I wanted to share that I think those who succeed in this fight attack, or at least uh, maybe attack's not the right word. They they look at it from four different sides. Uh, one would be a physical side. Uh, where they use uh, medication. There's nothing wrong with using medication for depression and anxiety. I know some people are against it, but we can't be against everyone using something that has definitely worked for them. Um, exercise has been shown to do as much for depression as antidepressants have and having a healthy diet, right? This is something that is involves your body and having a healthy diet. This is all part of the physical side of trying to manage this, uh, this problem. Um, you need to have an emotional side to it as well. Uh, I would highly, highly, uh, how do I, how do, what does, what does uh, Moroni say? I would exhort you that if you uh, feel like you have anxiety or depression or your children do, uh, to get them into a professional therapist. I know that um, maybe decades ago, that was something that was kind of seen as a uh, something to do that's weak or something. Uh, we talked about this last week with David Archuleta with his new album. Uh, this is not something uh, for the weak. Uh, I would say that healthy people have therapists. Uh, and there are so many out there with incredible talents and abilities that are just kind of waiting for you to, to knock on their door. So if you're having any sort of, oh, I don't know, I don't want to go share my problems with some stranger, I don't want to sit on a couch and have someone, that, that's not what this is. Uh, the, the therapists I have talked to, the therapists that I know personally, uh, they have incredible gifts that can help you uh, work through even some, um, perhaps some trauma that you have experienced uh, in, in earlier years and is kind of leading to this, uh, to the feelings that you have uh, today. Uh, of course, journaling and being in nature, that's all part of this emotional side of, of uh, attacking this. Uh, and then you need to make sure that you have a social side to this. Uh, studies show that who you spend your time with is really who you are going to be. So you need to make sure that you're spending time with happy and uplifting people. Um, that doesn't mean we kick people out of our family. That doesn't mean we're like, hey, you're out. No, we just, we need to add people to our life that are uplifting and uh, and take time for that. Some of us feel selfish when we take time for ourselves like that. And that's not a selfish thing to do. It's impossible to draw water from an empty well. And so you have to take time to replenish yourself. And that's a, that's a big one. Uh, spending time with family, friends who really fill you up. Uh, and then doing service, right? This is going to be part of our social part of this as well as getting out and 
uh, and volunteering and uh, being part of a cause that is bigger than ourselves. Uh, and the church provides plenty of opportunities for that. And then lastly, and of course, it's one that I feel is uh, so important, as John talked about, right, that you have to see this from a spiritual side. You have to get yourself right with God and then use the incredible tools that he's given us with prayer, scripture, meditation is been shown by science to be absolutely uh, wonderful in, uh, in limiting or being able to manage the effects of depression. I would add music from Meg's talk. Uh, to that spiritual side, right? And even that emotional side. So I, we just need to make sure that that get, gets addressed. And I hope that you feel like we as a group have, have, um, have been at least, uh, you know, um, have, have validated that point of view, that not everyone can just choose happiness, that uh, you have to, uh, that for some people, it's going to be a lifelong battle, but it is a battle that you can win. Now, I wanted to talk, um, I wanted to get away from that subject for a minute and just talk about the, the idea of agency in our happiness, right? Because there is some agency uh, that we have, uh, not, ju not just, you know, our DNA and our mind, but we do have agency when it comes to happiness. In fact, about 50% of your happiness is due to your DNA. So if you wake up happy and go to bed happy, uh, you should thank your parents. Uh, and if you don't wake up happy and go to bed happy, you should probably talk to a therapist about your parents because either way, about 50% of your happiness comes from your DNA. Only 10% of your happiness comes from your circumstances. Um, and that's an, that's an interesting thing, right? That you would think so much more is determined on what happens to me, but it's really not. And then the last one, 40% is determined by our choices. The problem is we just sometimes make bad choices. Let me show you a bad choice. This girl right here is making a bad choice, right? That is, that is not a good choice. That is not going to lead to happiness. And I know some of you are watching this going, oh yes, I have kissed pigs before. You didn't know he was a pig, right? I get it. Uh, then you found out later that he was a pig and it kind of made you unhappy. Have you ever made a choice uh, with one of your friends that you knew was a bad choice? Look at this next picture. This is a bad choice. You are going to end up very unhappy sometimes when we make uh, choices with, uh, you know, with friends and you're like that, uh, I, sh I should not spend time with you. You, uh, that, that, that was not a good choice. Let's go to the next one. Have you ever made a choice? Uh, have you ever helped someone make a bad choice? Now, you can't, you can't do this. You guys, you cannot, friends don't help friends make bad choices, right? Have you ever, um, have you ever made a bad choice? People had to help you out of, look at this next one. People had to help this kid out of his bad choice, right? That is a chair. His head is stuck in a chair. So how can we do better at making choices that lead to happiness? Well, one person who was really good at this was President Hinckley. Here's what he said. He said, I come this morning with a plea that we stop seeking out the storms and enjoy more fully the sunlight. I am suggesting that we accentuate the positive. Um, and that might be a little three word phrase you put up on your mirror or up in your, you know, maybe uh, in your car, something where you'll see it often accentuate the positive. This is a choice that you and I can make. He says, I'm asking to that you turn from the negativism that so permeates our society, right? Maybe turn that channel off where people always argue or turn that radio station off where people are so negative about one another. He said, turn away from that negativity that permeates our society and start looking for the remarkable good in the land and times in which we live. We live in the most incredible time uh, in the history of the world. If you want, if you're going to be in a pandemic, 2020 is the year to be in it, right? Look at the incredible blessings that we have around us. We need to speak, he says, of one another's virtues more than we speak of one another's faults. We need to talk good about other people. We need to mention all the good things we see in them. That we, uh, he says that optimism replaced pessimism right? And we can switch that around and that our faith exceed our fears. Uh, so where does this all start? Where does, uh, where does all this, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, uh, Hank, I don't want to be negative. You know, how did that happen? I, when I was a kid, you know, kids on average laugh 300 times per day and adults, it's 15. What happened? Was it the mortgage? What happened? Why did you stop laughing? Why did you stop being, you know, being of good cheer? I think Elder Holland was onto something. Here's what he said. He said, uh, negative speaking so often flows from negative thinking, including negative thinking about ourselves. Think about that for a second. Has, has this negativity started when you started to really criticize yourself? 
He says, we see our own faults and we speak or at least think critically of ourselves. And pretty before long, that's how we see everyone and everything. So if he says that often flows from negative thinking, let's try this. Let's try for the next 24 to 48 hours to control our negative thoughts about ourselves, right? Um, and we all do it. We all criticize things. I've, 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 worked with uh, teenagers and college students uh, for decades. And it's, I like my nose, but I hate my eyebrows, right? I, I like my cheeks, but I hate my chin. I like my big toe, but I hate my little toe. We got to stop. We have got to stop this criticism of who we are. I, I remember Meg saying that in her talk. It starts with loving your body, right? And seeing it as the glorious creation that it is. Now, I want to show you someone uh, who had a knack for doing this. Um, it was Elder Worthland. Do you remember Elder Worthland? Uh, some of you who are younger, you won't remember Elder Worthland, but uh, I absolutely remember Elder Worthland when he would shuffle up to the pulpit at General Conference and he would say the best things, right? He gave a great talk called Come What May and Love It. He gave another talk called The Virtue of Kindness. These are talks that have stayed with me for, you know, over, you know, over 10 years. And here's what he said at one point. He said, so many of us are always waiting to be happy. If only I could graduate. If only I could afford a car, if only I could get married, then I would be happy. He says, happiness is just over there, right? It's just pretty soon I'll be happy. And this, I've noticed this with my own kids in my own life. We, it starts when we're young. If I was bigger, then I would be happy, right? And then it's, if I was 16, then I would be happy. If I could move out, then I would be happy. If I could move back in, then I would be happy. If I could get married, then I'd be happy. If I wasn't married, then I'd be happy. If, if I had grandchildren, then I would be happy, right? And it just keeps going. If I was retired, then I'd be happy. If I could lose some weight, then I'd be happy. My actual grandmother said to me, this is a true story. She said she was in her, uh, she was 92 at the time. And she said, Hank, I think if I were dead, then I could be happy, right? I'm convinced there's people in the spirit world saying, oh, if I was resurrected, then I would be happy. It just keeps going, right? Well, here's what Elder Worthland finishes with. He says, we're going to go back to that quote, I'm sure. Uh, he says, don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for the right job, the right house, the right salary, the right dress size. Be happy today. Be happy now. Now, like we said earlier, there's some, there's some uh, mental illnesses that can stop uh, that from happening. But for those of us who are, who are not in the mental illness category, but we're just, you know, we're kind of choosing this, uh, when some, when things are different, then I will be happy. It's probably not the way, probably not the way we want to go. Let me show you something really quick. I'm, a lot of you know who Thomas Edison is. When Thomas Edison was 12 years old. Now, I know some of you, there are going to be some science people out there that are going to say, why well, uh, Edison? What about Tesla? Tesla was better. Okay. Uh, this is not a Tesla Edison debate. Uh, as I've told this story a couple of times, people have come up to me and said, have you ever heard of Nikola Tesla? Yeah, I've heard of Nikola Tesla. He's amazing. An incredible, brilliant man. Uh, today, I just want to talk about Thomas Edison. Later, we'll talk about Tesla. When Thomas Edison was 12 years old, he lost 90% of his hearing. You and I, I would see that as a very bad thing, losing 90% of your hearing, right? It's got to be terrible. Here's what he told his parents. He said, I like it. It helps me concentrate right? I like it. It helps me concentrate. He actually, in his mind, and I'm not sure if he was just had this DNA or if this is something he deliberately did, he tried to make negative things more positive, right? He tried to see them as good things. And I, he succeeded. When he was in his 30s, he was trying to invent a light bulb uh, that would be available to the general public. Uh, he had tried thousands of different prototypes uh, and none of them worked. And a, a newspaper wrote that Edison has failed. And here's what he wrote. He said, I have not failed. I have found over a thousand ways in which it will not work. He sees, right? Try that with your math teacher. You got that incorrect. Well, has anyone found that way to get it wrong? I don't think so. I think that's a discovery, right? Uh, that's an incredible thing to look at every failure as a step forward. All right. And when he was in 67, his New Jersey factory burned to the ground. Um, it cost him, uh, he, did, he only insured his buildings for about a quarter of a million dollars. And there was over $3 million in damages. It, it's just devastating. His son, Charles, said when he said, he said this, he said, quote, when I got to the fire, I saw my father. His hair was blowing in the wind. And he said, my heart broke for him. 
this, he was not going to live to see this rebuilt. But when he saw me, he shouted, Charlie, Charlie, where's your mother? And he said, dad, I, I, you know, father, I don't know. And uh, he said, Charlie, find your mother and bring her here fast. She'll never see a fire like this as long as she lives. He was excited to watch this fire. The next day, he said to his employees this. He said, my friends, there is great value in this disaster because all of our mistakes are burned up. Thank heaven we can start brand new. He saw this as a good thing. Did he really? You know, I don't know. I don't know. But he had a way of saying, nope, this is not negative. This is positive. So I thought we could try this tonight. If you're watching by yourself, I want you to do this out loud. If you're watching with your family, uh, then it should be easy because you, you can yell out things. I'm going to show you a potentially negative situation. I want you to find everything you can that's positive about it. We're going to try to train your brain tonight to see the positive. All right, here's our first one. This happens. You were supposed to be babysitting or you were supposed to be watching your nephew and you walk into the kitchen to this, right? Now, if you're negative, you're going to say, what a mess. Oh my goodness. This is awful. This is terrible. Now, don't do that. Find all the good reasons this is good. You might say, uh, at least he's not allergic. You might say it brings out his eyes, right? You might say um, he's going to have wonderful skin. You might say, go find the dog, right? Um, find reasons. While this is not a bad thing, this is a good thing. All right, let's go to the next one, Whip. Let's say this happens to you on vacation right? You're on vacation and uh, disaster strikes. Okay. There's all the reasons it's bad. It's going to be expensive, right? Da, 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 da. It's all the, now find all the reasons it's a good thing. You got to see an elephant up close, right? You finally know where that spare tire is. Do you see it underneath there? You've always been wondering where the spare tire is. You can get to it now easily. Uh, we're probably going to get a new car, right? Wow. What a picture, right? I'm going to try to see the positive here. What if you're a professional calligrapher and your dog gets into the ink? What about that? Show them that picture. Look at that. Go to the next one too. Uh, right here is a dog that got into the ink of her, uh, of his owners. Uh, um, she was a professional calligrapher. Uh, and look at that. <laughs> that is, that is permanent ink. My friends find all the reasons. That's a good thing. Go find all the reasons. Are you naming any? He's an artist. I'm going to get new floor, right? Um, I'm going to get a new dog. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, right? Can, we use, can you see a situation like this and say, no, it's a really good thing. One thing that's impressed me about Meg is that she said before many times, she said, if I could go back to that moment where I went off the side of that cliff, right? Where I became a quadriplegic, would I, would I, would I go through with it? Would I do it? And um, she said, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would happily jump because look at all the good that's happened to me as a result. That to me is absolutely inspiring, 100% inspiring. Is she, you, you know, you, you think, oh, everybody can do that. No, everybody can't do that, right? It's difficult to embrace a new life, a new change uh, and not want your old life back. But yet, here she is. All right. I tried to find the most difficult situation. All right. So think about this. You're out camping and you go to one of those really nice campgrounds, bathrooms that they have, you know, those kind you can smell 44 miles away. And uh, as you are in that uh, campground doing or in that camp bathroom, campground bathroom doing your thing, you look over and see this. All right. Go. Tell me all the reasons this is good. This is good because why? Because uh, uh, it's not on me. That's a good thing. Um, it's uh, hopefully it's friendly. Um, hey, we have toilet paper, right? Hey, that's a good thing. That was kind of a that's kind of a rare item these days, right? We have toilet paper. What I'm asking you to do is do what President Hinckley asked, and that is accentuate accentuate the positive. All right. Well, we need to wrap up. We've already, I've already gone over my time. So um, I want to show you a last quote from Elder Holland. Um, now, if this came from me, uh, it's not that powerful. But here, this is from a prophet, seer, and revelator. Uh, and he knows what he's talking about, right? He, he just doesn't believe it. He knows it. Uh, and those of you who have listened to Elder Holland talk through the years know that he has a powerhouse testimony and experiences to back that up. Here's what he says. He says, every one of us has times when we need to know that things will get better. That may be right now for you. 
We need to know that things will get better. He says, my declaration is that is precisely what the gospel of Jesus Christ offers us, especially in times of need, like right now. There is help. There is happiness. There really is a light at the end of the tunnel. The light is the very son of God himself. So you keep walking. You keep trying. There is help and happiness ahead. A lot of it. You keep your chin up. Trust God and believe in good things to come. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus.